I'm going to do it. Here we go. Here we go, Andrew. Thank you, Chrissy. Good luck to us. Well, good morning. We have two different kinds of music for today. Um, this is Bob Shus Pearls. My name is Chrissy McMahon, and I'd like to welcome you to the radio show. Today we have a special guest, Andrew Norton Weber. I met him in Del Cabamba last year in October at the 2010 uh, Utopia, or it was 1020 tw- Utopia 2010 gathering of the Rainbow Warriors, where Andrew uh, graced us with his knowledge of distilled liquids and urine therapy. And before that, I don't think I've even ever heard of urine therapy. Um, Our illustrious host of that Utopia conference was Galen, who I had on a couple days ago. And he did a little presentation of you're in, you're in, you're in for life or something, and he spelled it three different ways, and I was like, what is he talking about? He's really going to talk about urine? I'm like, oh, my God. That was so bizarre. But um, I listened to what he had to say, and we even had a Miss America, uh, or no, it was, a, was it Miss New York? Um, uh, maybe it was Miss so. America. No, it was, I forget. Well, anyway, you don't want to give away too much information, but... Well, anyway, she gave us some secrets that um, really helped to validate the benefits of urine therapy um, that were external. We'll just give you that. But um, Andrew's going to talk about his experience with distilled liquids and their effect on organic creatures, which was his original talk. And then... He wants to also share about what he's learned in conjunction to the still liquids about the pineal gland and astral projection. So without further ado, I'd like to give everyone Andrew Norton Weber. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Chrissy. Thanks for having me on. Um, Thank you so I'd much like to for dedic- being here. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful morning here. I'm in South Carolina. It's uh, September, and uh got nice weather. Um, I'd like to dedicate this talk to uh, somebody that we met at an art show in Chicago, um, Jody uh, and her boyfriend, Devin. And unfortunately, Devin wasn't there, but uh, so maybe more specifically, this talk is dedicated to Devin. Um, she said that... Well, we told Jody about everything that we knew about distilled liquids and the pineal gland and urine therapy, and she just soaked it up like a sponge and is currently a full steam ahead, a warrior with it, and is in the process of transmuting herself into her full light body through this process. Uh, and she was real concerned about her, her boyfriend, Devin, because he feels a lot of anxiety, and it feels a lot. And so I want to dedicate this to him, and I want to tell him that I'm proud of him because I think actually if you didn't feel anxiety in these crazy times, then you would be a zombie. And so I think that's the right reaction. And hopefully the show will be part of the knowledge that he needs to get rid of the anxiety. And it would make sense to have anxiety because everybody is completely uneducated as to the truths about themselves, and they have no weapons. And so if you're in the middle of a huge hailstorm and don't know what to do, you should be anxious. And so I think that's the proper feeling. And um, so this this is going to be dedicated to giving all of us um, the weaponry we need and the knowledge that we need to, to actually not only make it through this, to be, but to become in, in command of these times and to change what's going on. This is should be complete empowerment. And I'm going to give three basic knowledge sets, uh, and that is distilled liquids, the knowledge of the pineal gland, and prove to you that you are a ball of light. And if you have these three pieces of knowledge, 
you don't need to ever talk to me or anybody else again. You can put them together, and each person on their own can completely become a co-creating God and take off and be, do anything they want with unlimited power. Um, in short, you are a ball of light residing in your pineal gland and distilled liquids are what unfreezes the pineal gland uh, which has purposely been frozen by the society that we're in. And most people can only feel the five senses. And the pineal gland is the gateway, the stargate, the opening to all the other higher senses. And uh, the fluoride and the chlorine, which are both halides in the drinking water, go directly to the pineal gland and freeze it turn it into a stone, calcify it. And um, I, unless you're a very rare person who was lucky to live on, you know, grow up on very clean water, away from city water, and didn't even get, you ate real healthy your whole life, lots of raw fruits and vegetables, unless you're one of those people, I guarantee everybody out there in America if they go to their doctor say, I've got some headaches, or you know, go to, just go to a docking box and say, I want, I want an x-ray of my head or an MRI, you know, tell them you're feeling headaches or something, or you think you've got a tumor in the middle of your head. In that x-ray, it should be clear gray all the way through, right? You're not supposed to have any bones in the middle of your head. But there will be a white rock right in the middle of the photograph, and that is the pineal gland. And when they do autopsies on people in fluoridated societies, they find fluoride at about 5 to 10 parts per million through most of the body. But when they get to the pineal gland during the autopsy, it's at 22,000 parts per million. It goes there like a magnet. And the pineal gland has uh, the highest blood flow per cubic volume of any other gland in the body. And so you can almost visualize whatever you eat or drink or consume realize that it's almost immediately going to rush right over your pineal gland. So that will give you more impetus to think differently about what you put down your alimentary tube. And it goes there so much so that it, it shuts it down and it literally turns it into a rock. And so if anybody's wondering why there's this kind of crazy epidemic of five-year-olds that need Ritalin or can't think straight or bipolar disorder or anxiety or depression, well, having a rock in the very, very center of your head at your most important, most precious gland for thinking, <laughs> that would tend to be the obvious first place you'd want to look for problems. And the beauty of distilled water is that it melts that. Uh, most people aren't aware that there is a massive conspiracy to hide the knowledge of distilled water. When I try to tell people about it, I have to warn them about what they're going to run up against. Because if you Google distilled water, right on the first page, I think it's like about a third hit down, there's an article that says, it's titled, Early Death Comes from Drinking Distilled Water. Oh and in God. that article, it, it gives you the impression that it will, say, leach all the calcium out of your bones and you'll literally crumple to the floor or it will leach all the potassium out of your system and you'll have a heart attack, and which is completely not true. Uh, I can prove it to you. Um, and the other thing people, where people get it, say you ask most doctors, should I drink distilled water? They go, no, 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 no. It will leach minerals from the body. And where they're largely getting that from, along with that other article, but it's from the WHO, the World Health Organization, the supposed pinnacle of collected science health knowledge, they have an article, I think it might have come out in the 70s, not quite sure, but it's titled Demineralized Water. And so you can Google that too. And in that article, you'll find a line akin to, do not drink distilled water because it will leach minerals from the body. And a few sentences later, it says something else like, and by the way, you should add fluoride to your water. 
So if you understand how poisonous fluoride is, that kind of helps, tips you off as to where that article is coming from. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the WHO is part of the UN, and the UN has a stated goal of reducing the world's population. They have a depopulation program. So if you want to participate in the UN's depopulation program, by all means, stay away from distilled water. Um, now, this is an on-purpose half-truth. Yes, it does leach minerals from the body, but this supposed scientific body left out the known scientific fact that there's two major mineral body groups, organic and inorganic. And the truth and the beauty of distilled water is that it only leaches one of those types of mineral bodies, and it just so happens to be the mineral body group that you don't want at all and your body cannot use, cannot assimilate into your body. And that is the inorganic version. You are an organic creature. And you can only use organic minerals. There is zero position and or zero use for inorganic matter minerals in your body. And it's very simple to understand and it's very provable. And so they kind of put their foot in their mouths by trying to say this. Um, it's physically, electrically, scientifically, magnetically impossible for distilled water to leach organic minerals from the body. It comes down to the charge. Organic minerals have a negative charge to them, and all inorganic matter has a positive charge to it. And distilled water is nothing but a giant bath of negatively charged water molecules. And we all know that opposites attract. And so magnetically, distilled water is attracted to inorganic matter, and it rips it out of your body, and it, it dissolves it molecule by molecule. It just keeps ripping it apart. And all it does to you is or get, it slides. Distilled water just makes your cells so happy because it's pure and it's nothing but hydrogen and oxygen. And it, if you're an organic creature, it just brings you to full fruition and enlivens you and removes every single particle of dirt in your body if you drink it long enough and you drink enough of it. Um, distilled water, the kind of understanding of it is in the name. It's been distilled. It's water that used to be still. And the more junk that water has in it, the slower it becomes, the slower moving. And so distilled water, as I saw in one dictionary, is water that's been separated bit by bit and reassembled bit by bit. And in that process, it drops all of its garbage. And then it's all these perfectly round water molecules, and they're just... If you can imagine a house of balls that, uh, at an amusement park that children like to jump into, and you see how the balls just move out of the way effortlessly, and children just love to dive and play in it. Well, if that were distilled water molecules, let's try to make them dirtier by adding particles. Imagine if you keep sticking more and more little objects to the balls. You can see the friction builds up, and they don't move quite as well. And if you take it so far even as to the opposite to make them instead of perfect spheres, make them so full of junk that they're all perfect squares, cubes. Now you imagine jumping into it. There's not going to be much motion at all. In fact, it's going to hurt, and it's going to be a very, very slow-moving house of squares and not very fun to swim around in. Well, that's analogous to what distilled water looks like at the molecular level. It's perfect spheres with no objects attached to them, and there's no friction. And when you first have distilled water, you will notice this. You will notice how it just seems to fall down your throat, almost taking itself down your throat. It falls down like air. And you've probably seen a lot of times in your life when you're really thirsty and you want to chug some water, but it just doesn't seem to go down fast enough. And that's literally because it's full of uh, invisible rocks and sand. Uh, and distilled water has none of that. And so it just falls down your throat. Um, and so... These, it, it's, they're considered, Dr. Handley had a, a paper uh, called uh, Distilled Water 
and its effects on aging. And you can Google that article. It's a nice little two-page article. It's beautiful. Uh, and in that, he shows how that, um, he calls it the fastest, the most molecularly unstable water that there is. And it's just because it's like, you know, literally just rolling and rolling and rolling. It's just moving constantly. It's got no friction. It's just willing to move anywhere. And so that also is part of the action of how when it goes into the body to seek and destroy inorganic mineral deposits, it's just constantly moving on the stuff, uh, eating away at it like a, like a swarm of bees uh, or a swarm of ants. It just keeps going and going. And the, the calcified pineal gland, fluoride and chlorine are both inorganic minerals. And so that's an inorganic mineral deposit in that x-ray of your head. And distilled water will, over time, dissolve that. And your pineal gland is supposed to be a functioning, juicy little gland, not a white rock. <laughs> and so it will free that up, and then you will start to gain access to all the almost mythical uh, properties associated with a pineal gland, uh, in the esoteric and occult realm, that's known as the third eye. And most people think that that is a, a metaphorical, poetic term, but it is actually first and foremost uh, analytical, uh, no, not analytical, anatomical term. Um, David Wilcock has a phenomenal video called An Explanation of the Pineal Gland, and he really helped me understand the inside of it. Uh, and we'll get to that uh, in a minute. Um, I want to give a few more proofs about distilled water. Um, the most basic thing to look to is you can trust uh, the living truth of nature. Okay? And here's how nature feels about distilled water. It is the only type of water when Mother Nature wants to create new water she only uses the process of distillation. She doesn't use reverse osmosis. She doesn't use uh, a UV filtration or ozonation or, or alkalizing machines or very expensive, you know, just all these different contraptions people are coming back to. Uh, I found in my research that the heaviest heavy duty is truths are usually right in our face and they're usually incredibly simple. And here it is again with this one. Distilled waters are all precipitation, rain, mist, snow, dew, and fog. All live fruit and vegetable juices are distilled and all blood and urine are distilled liquids. And it's, it's the only reason you're still standing. The only reason you're alive is because distilled water is flowing through your body. But yet the WHO says do not drink it because it will kill you. It's just ridiculous. And it's so easily provable once you just know these simple facts about it. Um, now, the other source of distilled water is when you have a machine that you make it with. And that is basically an artificial, it's a rainstorm machine. It's a it's a rainstorm in a machine, and the byproduct of any rainstorm is rain. And so a distiller creates distilled water. Now, the only difference with it is it uses the method of boiling, whereas Mother Nature uses evaporation for all the precipitation, which is a much lower temperature process. Uh, the one problem with the machine is um, through boiling it to get it to evaporate, um, volatile organic compounds can be, which is what a lot of the nasty chemicals in city tap water are, and even radon is one of those. Those things have a lower VOCs, volatile organic compounds. They have a lower boiling point or the same boiling point as water. And so they actually make it through the distillation process when you're using a machine. And what you need to do with that is you have to pre-carbon filter it or carbon pre-filter it because carbon catches the VOCs. 
Um, you may have water that doesn't have, you have well water. You may, if that's what you're starting with, that's even better because it may not have VOCs in it. Um, and the way you can test it is to boil, to distill a batch. And after you distill it, if it tastes like, if it tastes like the worst water you've ever had, like plasticky terrible, that yeah. means you're drinking distilled water with nothing but VOCs in it. And that's, that means your particular water had those in it. So that is proof that you need to uh, carbon pre-filter it. So that's the only other additional step you need to take. And distillers, by the way, are much, it's probably one of the simplest uh, home water machine devices you can have versus reverse osmosis, where if you don't change the filters really often, they get the back side of them, the exit part of them, gets covered with bacteria. And so you're just, the process is a waste of time. And those filters are very expensive. Uh, distillation is very simple. The machines just maybe uh, once a month you need to clean it out, you need to empty it out and uh, give it a, uh, you know, descale it. Uh, but it's very simple. And the carbon pre-filters, you know, you can use Brita pitchers. Um, or uh, the carbon filters on refrigerator doors, that'll do it. Or you can put those things attached right to your faucet. So it's not much of an extra step, but it's simple. Um, so Mother Nature uses the low, low temperature evaporation process, and that's why her distillation never needs to be carbon pre-filtered because the VOCs don't make it through that process. Um, another simple fact you can use is you can ask any mechanic, you know, what should I do with my battery when it gets weak? And uh, when your battery is not turning your car engine over and it's going, rrr, rrr, it's in a very acidic state. It's wasted. And he'll tell you if you have a battery still where you can take the caps off, to take the caps off and pour in specifically distilled water because it's a negatively charged uh, body of water. And when you're in an acidic state, that's positive. And so you pour in the negative water, and it turns the battery back from acidic positive to alkaline negative. And all of a sudden, boom, it starts the engine. No problem. It has power. Well, that's exactly what you are. You're an electrical engine, and it will do the same thing to you. It will make you alkaline. And on, not, on that note, uh, I need to give you the other uh, bullpucky argument that they use to scare people away from distilled water. I've already given you the one. They give you. They try to confuse you about the minerals. They say they imply that it leaches all minerals, and it's absolutely not true. It only leaches the inorganic ones. The other argument they use is they say, "Don't drink it because it's acidic, <laughs> and it'll make you acidic." Completely not true. Um, and what we can look towards there is lemons. Everybody knows uh, that lemon juice is very acidic, but it has an alkalizing effect on the body. And that's how you truly gauge uh, whether or not something is alkalizing or acidifying. And they try to say that distilled water is acidic and it will make you acidic. Well, this is, again, an on-purpose half-truth. Yes, it is acidic. On the pH scale, where 7.0 is a neutral, uh, distilled water generally comes in at about a 6.0 to a 6.2, and that is slightly acidic. But that's got nothing to do with its effect on the body. Uh, its effect on the body is alkalizing, and not only alkalizing, but perfection of alkalizing. It puts you, I think the body is supposed to be at a 6.4 or something like that, that's what, it's the reason Mother Nature gives it to you, and it makes your body in a perfect alkaline state. And people are buying these $4,000 expensive uh, machines that, that add drops back into the water, and they're putting their water back up to 8.5 alkalinity. It's just ridiculous. You don't need to go through these crazy steps or have crazy machines to do that. Um, you know, what are you going to do when the power goes out? Uh, you aren't going to be using your machine anymore. Um, and, of course, we'll get into urine therapy and so that we know in times of disaster, you don't need electricity. You have your body as a water distiller itself, 
and plus you also have all fruit and vegetable juices as water sources, and rain, uh, although I'm not so sure with today's chemtrail skies about the rain source anymore, but I don't think that's going to last very long. So at some point, rain is going to be another free, electrically free, you don't need machines to get it, source of distilled water. Um, well, I think that's a, a great beginning. We're um, we're already over the half hour, lim- you know, mark. So you've explained okay, cool. the filled liquids and their importance and how they've been repudiated uh, through the political machine and yeah. how you've debunked everything that they said. So um, you haven't really touched too much on urine therapy. So um, okay. if you want to just you refresh, you. people can go to our first uh, interview or my YouTube interviews of you. But if you want, you can just briefly talk about um, how we're born. And okay. And just don't look good and, you know, just go through the channel. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And I'll just throw in here that... Um, uh, I own the website AquariusTheWaterBearer.com, and um, I don't believe there's anything out yet. But this is where uh, all knowledge that I have collected is going to be available, and it's currently being worked on uh, by a very awesome uh, person who lives in Ecuador, and. Um, uh, I put together a list of 24 doctors who had the courage to stand up and tell the truth about distilled water, and that will be on there so you can read that. And so you don't even have to listen to me. You'll see that there are doctors who are basically, you read all their quotes together, and you will have just as complete understanding of distilled water as I do. Um, I'm going to put all the urine therapy knowledge is going to be on Aquarius, the water bearer, um, knowledge about how to unfreeze the pineal and so on. That's going to be where all the collected water knowledge is going to be. Um, and I just want to say that uh, the importance of that and why it's, it's poetically beautiful to me is that this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius and it very much looks like Aquarius is here now bringing back the, the true knowledge of water. And uh, people who study uh, horoscopes uh, and a study Aquarius and not even studying the physical attributes of water, the main way that they'll sum up that Aquarius attribute is, is that he uh, brings psychic awareness and psychic communication. And that beautifully is exactly in sync with what I'm talking about, that water, pure water, distilled water, unfreezes the pineal gland which is the pure source for all of your psychic awareness. And so it's it's just perfect. And I, I'm glad that Aquarius is here now. And I'm very grateful that we all have this knowledge now because it's, it is the tool that we need to reach the next plateau. I'm aware right now that I'm very dumb and there's a whole massive other level of knowledge that is just out there and it's infinite. But distilled water gets us all up to that platform where we can start to access the knowledge. It'll get you to the actual universal internet, the etheric internet. Okay? Uh And so now let's come back to urine urine therapy. And the beauty of that is that your kidneys are water distillers. And most people's first reaction to urine therapy is one of disgust because they're used to the urine being so smelly and terrible and wouldn't even fathom drinking it. And that's because of your cooked food diet. Cooked food, we are the only animals that eat dead food. And vultures and, uh, you know, jackals, they at least are eating putrefied flesh. (laughs) There is not one other creature on this planet that completely annihilates their food with heat and flames before they eat it. And so you're eating totally dead garbage. I don't care if it's beautiful and tasty and it's steak and lobster and even vegetarians. They, they spend tons of money on beautiful organic fruits and vegetables and then they cook it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You just, you just turned all of the organic matter in that food, and I don't mean organic as in whether it was raised with pesticides, 
I mean organic in that it's living and it's alive and that the form of minerals you can use. Well, when you apply heat, you flip the electrical charge. That's the whole purpose of the raw food movement is to stop people from turning their organic mineral-based food into inorganic mineral-based food. And so it rots like garbage inside of you and smells permeate. And your urine comes out disgusting. Okay? Now, the beauty of this is you can, you can change that really quickly if you switch to live fruit. That's probably the highest diet, right? The, the diet, diet in Garden of Eden or Paradise is fruit and rainwater or fruit and distilled water. And your urine is the highest distilled water source possible anywhere. It even blows away rainwater uh, because all, scientifically it is known that in all, I have 20 urine therapy books from around the planet, and even in the ones that are purely scientific-based, in all of them, there's always a line and akin to, and it's a known scientific fact, that urine is more sterile than distilled water. And that's just one time through. Even if you've been eating steak and lobster your whole life and you pee out and it's disgusting and smelling, even in that moment, it's more sterile than distilled water. And that's why I say it's the only reason you're still standing. That's what your kidneys do is constantly distill the water so that it can run through you and keep you clean and keep you alive. Um, so in urine therapy, people start drinking their urine and they start looping it. And so if you can see that just one time through, it's more sterile. Try to fathom if you looped it 10 times or 100 times or 1,000 times and then 10 years in a row. That water is going to become, <laughs> you just can't even imagine you think if you if you for the first time go and try some store bought distilled water or you even make your own and you're like oh my gosh that is so smooth I didn't know water could be so smooth. Your body has the ability to make water that will blow that water away, and I've experienced this myself. Um, and so, for anybody out there, um, you can just start drinking a gallon a day of store bought distilled water. Uh, and possibly even within that day, you'll start urinating clear. You know that when you drink a lot of beer, you start peeing clear. Well, that would, again, be a good way to jump on the clear water wagon. And the first thing your body does is clean out the blood system because that's the highway for removing garbage. It can't remove garbage if the highway is full of potholes and junk and dirt everywhere. And so the very first thing it does is clean out the blood highway and that is what your urine is part of. And so it is the first thing to start becoming clear and clean. And so even if you're hugely obese, 300, 400 pounds, the first thing that you can make happen is have your blood system become completely clean, and then you can actually hop on the urine loop and start accessing free distilled water that is of a distillation level that is unparalleled, Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, a proof that you've already drank it, you want to talk about how we're born and how we come into this world. Um, we all drank our urine for nine months straight in the womb. The amniotic fluid is urine. Um, for the first three months, it's mainly your mom's pee, and for the remaining six months, it's mainly yours. Uh there's no umbilical cord attached uh, to your genitals. The umbilical cord is attached to your intestines. And that should be another piece of proof to people that urine is not a waste product. Waste goes through your intestines, and that's what that excretory channel is for. Uh, if urine were a waste product, how is it possible that from day one, just about, the human fetus the zygote, the embryo, is floating in urine. Yeah, urine is actually the ultimate perfect water liquid. It's what we grow in, and we would not have grown without it. And when you're in the womb, if you remember, you breathe like a fish. You actually are continually 
sucking your own urine down your mouth. <laughs> and uh, that is more proof that it's not a waste product because, uh, you know, otherwise you'd just be getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. Uh, and it'd be a cesspool in there, but it's not. Uh, you are actually peeing out the water that is the water that breaks at birth. And you are actually peeing out the water that you become. That water is what physically forms your body. Uh, urine is also known as living liquid tissue. And in urine therapy, if you say you have a problem with your eyes, you put urine drops in your eyes, and that becomes your eyes. If you have a cut on your skin, you put urine on that cut, and that urine becomes your skin. And that is, you know, babies come out, they, they smell sweet, and they have beautiful, fluffy, plumpy skin because they've been floating in urine. And you mentioned the supermodel, and that's uh, one of their biggest secrets is that they put fresh urine on their face at night, they let it air dry, and they go to bed and they leave it on all night. Um, the urea in urine allows each individual skin cell to hold its maximum amount of water. And so it creates beautiful, plump skin. And urine will uh, erase wrinkles. Wrinkles are just lines of decrepit uh, uh, skin cells that are hardly holding any water. And so they all contract and become all, you know, crippled, so to speak. But you start giving them urine which has got urea in it, and that enables them to hold their maximum amount of water at the same time that you're offering them the most awesome water in the universe. And so they, they quickly fill up with this beautiful water, and wrinkles disappear, literally. I don't care if you're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. There's, um, I'm going to debunk alchemy right here, too because it helps us stay with the baby to prove this. Or, um, the alchemists and their whole, you know, your main thing when you hear about alchemy is your picture is you think of people in, in dungeons or up in their attics or in bell towers with a wizard's cap on into the late of the night reading books by candles for decades at a time trying to figure out this ultimate secret of how to turn lead into gold. And one of the alchemists' most uh, prominent symbols from way, way back is the Ouroboros. Is it Ouroboros or Ouroboros? Do you know? Ouroboros. I don't know how to that. Okay. And that is the symbol of the snake eating its tail. Well, that's exactly what the baby is. And we've all been the Ouroboros for nine months straight. And that's what you become again when you start practicing urine therapy and start looping your urine. You are the snake eating its tail. You are consuming yourself. And it is the ultimate power cycle. And um, that is how the baby grows, by consuming itself. And it's the water that doesn't. Um, the, what that symbol of the snake eating its tail is, it is showing you that the human body is a perpetual motion machine or has the ability to be it or a free energy device. The basic tenet of any perpetual motion machine is that it performs an action which um, creates energy. And the action that it took to create that energy required less energy than it took to perform that Oh, wait a second. It takes less energy yeah. to perform the action right. than the amount of energy yeah. that the action creates. And that is exactly what you are. And the action that you have to take to get that energy is you have to lift the cup to your mouth. You have to pee into a glass and you have to lift it to your mouth. Now, if everybody understands that distilled water, which is what urine is, and is nothing but hydrogen and oxygen, or mainly that, uh, when it's urine, uh, we know that hydrogen and oxygen are rocket fuels. And football players, when they're out of energy and they're breathing crazy hard, they huff oxygen. 
because it gives them energy. Uh, and, and oxygen is, you are pretty much 60% oxygen. You are, yes, you are 80 to 85% water. Well, water is is uh, largely two-thirds oxygen. I know it's H2O, but the hydrogen oxygen molecule is very small. The oxygen molecule is huge. And so you are actually the number one element that you are is oxygen. And so when you drink that glass of urine, it's a huge body of oxygen plus hydrogen, and those are both fuels. And so you can probably pretty easily, with even common logic, understand that the action of lifting the cup to the mouth requires less energy than the amount of energy that is in that cup. And so right then and there, just in one movement, you have absorbed more energy than you spent in one action. And speaking of that cup, this also debunks the whole search for the Holy Grail. Nobody needs to search for that thing anymore because they're everywhere. There's no such thing as the Holy Grail. Uh, the properties of why everybody ever wanted to search, and Monty Pythons is looking for the Holy Grail, the properties associated with drinking from the Holy Grail are long life and full health. Well, those are exactly the benefits of drinking urine. And the joke about the search for the, the lost Holy Grail is that it's not the cup that's important. It's what's in the cup. And so any drinking vessel can become a holy grail. It's what you use and to complete the, the circuit with. Okay, uh -huh. I just want to interject because um, I got the source field investigations by David Wilcock, and mm -hmm. I was trying to see if he had anything in there about distilled liquids, and I couldn't find anything. But one of the things he does say on the Enigma video, I believe, maybe not, uh, but it's in the book, that he he prefaces that the Holy Grail is the pineal gland because it holds uh -huh. the, the elixir of life, which is the liquid within the pineal gland that makes it work. So you, when you get into that, you can talk about that a little bit. But I okay. hardly agree that any vessel that you put distilled liquids into, mostly urine therapy or urine, is the Holy yeah. Grail. Yeah, I agree. Now, now, why it becomes holy, it's actually kind of a funny, a very basic uh, utilitarian thing, okay? Let's say disaster strikes and we all have to flee for the woods. And we're used to getting our water from machines and out of the pipes and it's all convenient, okay? So if you're out in the woods and you want to start looping your own urine, what if you don't have a cup? <laughs> yeah, what now, if you don't have a cup? <laughs> right. This is the beauty of having any vessel. That is the whole trick of it. Now, it's one thing for men, and I've seen videos of monkeys doing this. They could kind of put themselves upside down and pee into their mouth, straight into it. Okay, But it's also kind of hard to swallow when you're upside down. Uh, monkeys have huge mouths, and there's this one, if you Google uh, animals drinking urine, there's this <laughs> funny video. Of this You hear this little boy going, oh, but he's at a zoo watching it. And this monkey is literally just, you know, he doesn't care if anybody's watching. He's peeing. He's got a huge old mouth, peeing right into it, big old pool of water, and then he rolls upside, right side up and swallows it. And I've also seen videos of female uh, uh, monkeys or gorillas, and they squat, and they will pee into their hand and repeatedly bring their hand up to their mouth, drink it, stick the hand back down over and over and over again. Now, that's kind of a wasteful process because, you know, your hand doesn't hold water very well. Uh, so it's even harder for females to complete the loop. And so this just shows the real basic thing. Even if it's a, a, a leaf or a piece of curved bark or if you, get a, if you find a rock and you bash it out and create a divot, which you can pee into, that's what makes the purpose of a cup so, so important when you are not in society with manufactured objects everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, now back to alchemy um, and turning lead into gold. 
Okay, so we've got what I'm going to state is that this alchemy is where the knowledge of urine therapy has been hidden for the past thousands, 12,000, 6,000 years. I don't know how long. That has been the main purpose of alchemy. That's where it's been hidden. Uh, and one of the pieces of proof of that is until John Armstrong wrote his book on urine therapy called The Water of Life, I think it first came out in the 50s, there were almost no books available on that were saying, you know, that were subjects of urine therapy. If you knew that alchemy was was actually the secret of urine therapy, you could look at that, but almost nobody knows that. Uh, and so when John Armstrong wrote his book, even though there's this massive urine therapy document, ancient 6,000-year-old document in India called the Shivambu Kalpa, uh, even the prime minister of India back in the uh, 70s or 80s, uh, I think it was the late 70s, Maraji Desai, he didn't even know about urine therapy until somebody handed him a copy of Armstrong's book, The Water of Life, and he read it and went right to it and started publicly uh, promoting urine. He, and he, he told his people that he drinks a cup a day, and he actually tried to promote it publicly with his people. And it was only then that it came out that the highest yogis had this secret document called the Shivambu Kalpa. And it was 107 verses specifically devoted to giving you instructions of how to drink your urine. And it was only then again after that that it was discovered that there's an Egyptian. Uh, uh, it's called the Water of Life, papyrus. It's also uh, roughly 6,000 years old. And it's again, it's a document giving specific instructions about drinking urine. But nobody knew about those uh, until Armstrong put out his book. And, you know, I've got 20 books on urine therapy, but that's because those have all come out since Armstrong wrote his book. Uh, and, you know, the, just the knowledge has come out and out and out. And um, on the, on the, uh, the Shivambu Kalpa document, the Indian Sanskrit, and the Egyptian Water of Life papyrus, those are also going to be at AquariusTheWaterBearer.com so people can see those there. Uh, the book, currently the book that the Siobhan Bukalpa document is in is called The Golden Fountain by Colin Vandercroon uh, out of uh, Holland. He wrote that book, uh, and that's where I first saw it. Now, Okay, uh, and do you want to talk a little bit about the Aquarian book by Anonymous? Would that yeah, in here, I was just going to bring that up later? Thank you. Okay, um, just came out. Uh, in May of this year, uh, there's a book coming out called The Book of Aquarius by Anonymous. And I would like to publicly help everybody to know that this book is a joke. Uh, it's meant to. This is a classic 80-20 bait and switch. This book is designed to steer you off course. And uh, it is it is supposedly the guy anonymous starts out by saying, I'm going to reveal the secrets of alchemy. And uh, this is for the first time being revealed in 12,000 years. And he's uh, the whole, the main thing that alchemists are always after is how to turn lead into gold. And he purports to show you of how, and he reveals that urine is the secret ingredient that you need to turn lead into gold. And uh, one of the first things that tipped me off is he was bragging about how that he, uh, he of all people, was one of the only ones that had the knowledge to put this all together. And I said, well, that's kind of juvenile. If, you, if, you, if you're so smart, why would you even need to say that? Um, but then it quickly dawned on him as I read it, he's giving instructions of how to use urine. And he wants you to get some scientific apparatuses and you need to have a cupboard dedicated to this and is literally going about revealing of how you use urine to physically create the philosopher's stone this white powder that will turn actual lead into actual gold and that's purportedly what he's telling you um, and 
this is a ruse. This is the 80-20 is being they give you 80% truth, but they give you 20% lies, and they do this all the time to try to steer people who are on the path towards discovering truths to steer you off course. And they literally steers you about three feet off course. And I mean by three feet is he wants you to focus on creating a stone that you can hold in your hand that will give you power. When the joke of it is, is, is it's really, if you know how to read these alchemical texts, they're talking about urine and the process of looping it inside the body and what we're talking about, about drinking it. And um, people who can see auras, when you have that bone in the cell, when you have a calcified third eye, in your aura field, there is a gray dot right on your third eye spot on your forehead about the color of lead, okay? When you start drinking urine, which is distilled water, and it melts in organic mineral deposits, and it melts that stone in the middle of your head, and when your pineal gland opens up fully, the gray dot in the auric field disappears and a golden glow surrounds your head. This is turning lead into gold. This is the actual meaning of alchemy, of turning lead into gold. It is not at all about being able to magically turn the metal lead into the metal gold. And conveniently, Aquarius, I mean, I'm sorry, not Aquarius, Anonymous, put this book out called the Book of Aquarius, and in it he says it'll take you about three years to do this, or if you get it just just right the first time, that you can achieve the Philosopher's Stone in 18 months. And he's talking, he's talking about an external object. He's giving you these bullshit arguments, sorry my language, um, that you take your urine and you have a, a heating plate and you keep putting urine in there and you let it evaporate. And you put it again and you let it evaporate. And you got the temperature just right. And over time, slowly this powder will form. And he's saying, if you do it just right, you can't mess up, it'll turn from one color to the next, to red, to black, to, uh, to white, to on and on and on. Uh, and eventually, if you do it just right, you'll get this powder and then... And then you'll have all these magical powers, everything you've ever read about alchemy and that you can do all these beautiful things. And St. Germain uh, was able to transport anywhere. And, and they always say that, you know, creating gold is the lowest thing on the totem pole that you can do with the Philosopher's Stone. That's the least of the things. You can, you know, you can travel instantly. You can do anything you want. And, but you're powerless until you get it. And so you see that's the joke right there. They, again, they don't want you to think that you have the power. And that's the truth, is that we are born with all the powers that we need. We have all the tools. Everything is contained within us. But yet, Anonymous wants to steer you off course and that you're powerless until you create this external object. Okay? Well, <laughs> let's put up a scenario that kind of blows this away. All right. Let's say it is an external object. Let's say you, you have to make this external stone in order to have these powers, okay? Well, let's say you decide to go visit Mars with your, with your magic stone, okay? And you're, you're exploring the canyons of Mars, okay? What if you trip and you drop the stone down a crevice and you can't retrieve it? Oh, oh. now you're powerless again. Damn it. I'm powerless without <laughs> external objects. That's what they want. So now you've got to sit there on Mars for three years to build another stone, but now you don't even have your lab equipment, you don't have electricity, you don't have your apparatus, you don't have your heating plate. No, this is a and joke, wild people. Animals, and there's wild animals there, they say. Andrew yeah. Bellagio has pictures of wild animals. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, so now you're <laughs> screwed because you, you fucking dropped... Oh, sorry, my language... You drop oh, my God, rock. I have to cut it. <laughs> okay. uh, so now you're screwed. You dropped your rock. But no, this is a joke. This is a joke. The philosopher's stone, think about it. The thinking stone. That's the pineal gland. The pineal gland, when it's healthy and fully functioning, is covered with crystals. 
It's called the pineal gland because it looks like a tiny pine cone. It has the perfect C spiral to it, and it's covered with crystals. That is the philosopher's stone, the philosopher's crystal, the thinker's crystal, the rock, not the calcified rock, but the actual beautiful crystal-covered, healthy, juicy, functioning eyeball in the center of your head. That is the philosopher's stone. And the way you free it and you create and you free it up and you make it fully healthy and functioning and fired up and full on is you drink distilled liquids. And if you're really smart, the ultimate way to do it is you act as the Ouroboros and you drink your own water and you use urine. You keep looping urine over and over again. Instead of in a cabinet, you keep applying urine and evaporating, evaporating, evaporating it. You keep applying urine through yourself, 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 yourself. And this is the Philosopher's Stone. And it's in the middle of your head. And you cannot drop it. <laughs> you cannot lose it down a crevice in Mars. And it turns the lead of you into gold. The lead, and, and that is the mark of the beast. Uh, as David Wilcox so nicely pointed out, the gray dot on your forehead, when you've got a rock in the center of your head, you're a beast when you can only have the five senses. That's the mark of the beast. And you become an angel or the pure spirit version of you. That's why all the old paintings of saints have a golden glow around their head. That is the gold. That is the joke of alchemy, of turning lead into gold. And uh, Anonymous screwed up. Anonymous tried to steer us off course, but he screwed up. He actually gave us, if you know how to read the 20% that steers you off course, if you know how to filter right, this, the book of Aquarius is actually an incredibly high vibrating book, especially if you ignore Anonymous' comments and just read what he's got in it is all these phenomenal, gorgeous alchemical text quotes from the 12th, 14th century, 17th century. Now, I had never studied alchemy, and I figured I, I would get to it at some point. Uh, but he has actually done me a huge favor. He's, I don't have to study it now. He, he, he screwed up and put it all together. And now I actually make that book part of my urine therapy collection because he concentrated all the most phenomenal alchemical texts that so easily, if you know how to read it, you can tell he's talking about urine. And they're talking about and in, in using it as urine therapy. And so it's actually a wonderful book if you know how to read it right. But if you don't, well, isn't that, it's got all these people yeah. like, uh, I'm sorry, like uh, Jay Widener. I hope Jay Widener hears this message and William Henry and David Wilcox. And I can tell Susie did just listen to the source field investigations, and uh, in there he said to drink reverse osmosis water because it helps to remove right. minerals. So he's close, he's on there, but he doesn't know that reverse osmosis is actually its a very complicated system. And unless you change the filters really often, uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be as, have as much vacuuming power as distilled water does. Uh, but Jay Widener and all these people now are actually in the process. They've bought scientific lab equipment and they're right now in the process trying to make this stone. And they're all giddy and excited about it. And I feel sorry for them and I hate to break this to them but I hope they, at the same time, they can see the truth of what I'm seeing and that they actually have the power within. They don't need, it's not external objects. I mean, it's, it's a joke. It's the, they're, they're wasting your energy. And a part of the, also, the trick is, is it's going to keep people in a state of fear until 2012. They did that on purpose, the timing of the book. And they said, the earliest you said you can get it done is 18 months. If you do it just right. And, you know, it came out in about May Well, that of 2011. That is suspiciously close, 18 months away from December of 2012, okay? <laughs> and so the powers that be want to keep people in a state of fear because the feelings that you feel are the type of reality you'll create. And so Jay Widener right now, until he has the stone, thinks he's powerless. But right. And it's going to, you know, and I'm sure it, it's not going to work. It's totally a joke. It doesn't. There's no powder that does that, turns actual lead into actual gold. Um, 
if you actually want gold, if you feel you need gold coins, okay, open up your pineal gland. Open up full psychic awareness and ask for vision as to where there's gold buried. Or, you know, or you know, you can use it that way if that's what you need. Uh, but there again, you can see if once you every psychic ability you have ever heard of, those are the gifts that are available to you through opening up your third eye, and that's why the al- the, al- the alchemists say that uh, getting gold is the the most vulgar, the lowest thing on the totem pole of the powers that you can do with the philosopher's stone, because the ability to time travel, to astral project to have mental telepathy, to be able to speak to your cats and dogs without having to use words, those obviously are off the charts more valuable than gold. <clears throat> so that's another Well, what, another. what I wanted to inter- interject with was um, you said how the Book of Aquarius has all the alchemical uh, quotes in all in one place, so that kind of cuts your research, you know, down. To, unless you want to research to make sure that what he put in there is actually legitimate. But um, there's a saying in the Bible, and, and I guess I could call myself a Bible scholar because for five or seven years I just I all I did was read it. Um, I was Christian and I prayed and went to church and all that, but I religiously every day read the Bible. Uh, over and over and over again, because you know you can only and it, you can read it in a year, you can read it in a, like a month, I guess. But anyway, um, one of the things it says it says, "He who has ears, let him hear." You know, and I think that it's just like another Illuminati tactic is that they have it again hidden in plain sight, and only those, like you said, who actually know what to look for can actually read between yes. the lines and yes. see. So, unfortunately, most people have no clue that even yeah. what they're looking at. But when they read what Anonymous has written in the Book of Aquarius and how he's put it together, it's not really that he's written anything. He's just linked a bunch of information together and come up with a scenario that makes it an internal quest instead of an internal quest. When everything metaphysical right now is telling us we need to look inward, we're going to find the answers within us. I mean, we're constantly being told that message over and over and over again. But yet, because we live in this mechanistic uh, construct, the 3D reality, you know, we're always thinking material, materialistically. And it's very mechanistic. I mean, everything you look from from science, religion, you know, social, everything is mechanical. Uh, there's very few organic processes anymore. I mean, even our food is uh, created by machine. Um, the way that the food is, is brought to us is through machine. There's no hands on, uh, or, except for organic farming. So, um, yeah. you know, when you think about it, it's, it's the war is uh, supposed to be a spiritual war. So how do we break that down to the organic to the mechanistic, the inorganic to the organic? I mean, we're right there. We're right at the precipice. And I think now when I think about what you've told me over the last month or two about the philosopher's stone, about the pineal gland and its relationship or organic liquid to the relationship to the pineal gland. Now when you look at the Hopi prophecy and you two, see the two lines divided, and do you know on the one line there's like corn growing on it or something? I mean, it makes perfect uh-huh. sense. It makes right, right. The organic, perfect very. Sense. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, everything, it just brings everything like right there. I mean, you could take all this information and now, you know, now I know what my purpose is. Like now I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, so it, uh, I'm the urine therapy queen here now. <laughs> I was uh-huh. trying to get Susie to come on and, and share with us, you know, her experiences because the two of you have more experience than I do. I'm just a novice dabbling in this wonderful 
field of enlightenment, and you and Susie have years behind you of practicing this treat, this treatment, this therapy, this holy grail. Uh, I don't know what the words I'm at a loss for words, but you know, um, I'm not going to say anymore. But if I think of something, I'll bring it up. But we're collaboratively, you know, we're, we're piecing this together. But you've done the majority of the work and finding out about the pineal gland and finding the book, uh, the Aquarius book uh, by Anonymous, the book of Aquarius by Anonymous, and being able to put all this together is just phenomenal. So uh, I I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in awe. Um, and oh, thank we've you. Tried to, we've tried to contact these people to try to share this information. We've uh, contacted... Scott Meredith of Conscious Media Network. Um, we've contacted uh, Clifford Carnicarm about uh, helping with Morgellons. He's um, he, he yeah. listens intently, but I think everybody's getting hung up on the urine therapy. But maybe this anonymous, maybe Jay Widener and William Henry is going to open it up where. Uh, a couple nobodies, really, because <laughs> nobody really knows who we are except for ourselves, which is really important to me. But, you know, who's going to really listen? Um, even yeah. when you tell people the model, this is the model secret. They bathe in it. They soak it on their face overnight. You know, they keep it in storage for weeks, you know, so they have it at maximum strength so that they can get the full effect of it and win beauty contests, you know, uh, people still don't listen, you know. So no. it's, well, it's, it's so a highly, time. Yeah, yeah, it's, very, it's a transitory time, and uh, we've been so highly miseducated that it's very hard to wake up from the slumber. And, yeah, I gave Clifford Carnicom a full hour of this information over the phone, and he acted all excited and he said he wanted to give me an hour long radio interview uh, and actually let you interview me and he's going to broadcast it through the Carnicom Institute and I even mailed them a set of precious distilled water books and urine therapy books and I ended up getting complete silence from them after the phone call so I don't know he if sent somebody the either book? He yeah sent the book? I sent him a nice yeah, I sent him a nice package of urine therapy books and distilled water books. You didn't books. send them to me. You never sent them to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I'm only playing. Well, <laughs> no, you know, I, 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 felt, I felt that uh, I the video Institute... Tapes, I, really... I got the tapes. <laughs> I, I'm only huh. playing with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, the, I... the Institute has been quite, you know, a place for gathering knowledge about chemtrails, and, and, you know, they said that they were a public service and they were... They had a library, so I said, "Okay, well, I'll I'll, I'll send you books to make it part of your your collection." And um, you know, it's complete silence now. I don't know if somebody told them not to let me on the air, or if they got freaked out, or if they're actually they don't want to give answers. That, that's actually what I'm kind of most suspicious of, because I watched Carnicom at a uh, the 9/11 Truth Movement speech in Portland, Oregon, uh, two or three years ago. And during that speech, during the question and answer period, this kid stood up and very, very emotionally and uh, strongly told the crowd that he had been covered with Morgellons symptoms and he had applied this a particular method that had completely erased it. He, won't, he was almost crying, telling his story about how much pain he had been in and then how beautifully and miraculously he had discovered a method to clear it all up. And I was listening, and I was going, oh, my God, I bet you anything he's talking about urine. And so he tells that, and Carnicom's standing there listening up at the podium. And, of course, everybody in my house that's watching the video, and I'm sure everybody that's listening is going, okay, 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 yeah, 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 tell me, tell me. And you're expecting the next thing has got to be out of Carnicom's mouth is, oh, well, geez, share. You know, tell us what you did to erase more gallon symptoms. He didn't ask him at all. He didn't even ask him at all, and that made me incredibly suspicious. How could you do that? How could somebody be right there telling you the cure to Morgellons and Carnicom's all about exposing 
the truth about chemtrails and more gallons and how awful it is, but yet he didn't ask the kid to share what it was that so perfectly removed it from his body. And so the same thing I call Carnicom, I ask him what he knows about distilled water. He says he doesn't hardly know a thing about it. And so I give him a complete rundown about distilled water and urine therapy. And he's listening and listening and agrees. He's like, oh, that's this great information. I'd like to give you a radio show. And then complete silence. And it's been months now since then. And, they, you know, they didn't lose my email. It's not hard to get a hold of me. And I even called them again and left a message and said, I'd like an explanation for why you all of a sudden dropped me. And no explanation, no phone call, no email. All I ever got back from them, I even emailed them all the documents. I emailed them the Egyptian, the Indian, on and on and on. I got one email back from a secretary somewhere there and said, it's nice that everybody wants to help out. You know, some bullpucky, thanks a lot thing, but, you know, nothing. And same thing with Scott and Meredith at the Conscious Media Network. I spent a couple of days sending emails back and forth to Scott and telling him about all this stuff, and he was just asking me to prove that I, how could this be true about urine, and I gave him the proofs. And he was all about it and all about it and all about it, and I was like, okay, so do you want to do an interview or not? Total silence. Nope, don't want to do it. So, you know, you and I are doing it now. And uh, also I hope Andrew Basaggio gets a hold of this because I can tell as well that all of his, you know, he's he's all about that we're going to have uh, teleportation machines in the future and all this technology. Well, Andrew, it's you have the power within you. You don't need trillion-dollar machines to teleport. Those are one of the very aspects, it's called biolocating, that you can do once you fully turn on your psychic powers. Um, it's the pineal gland, and it's, it's urine that will loosen it up or distilled water. Uh, let me get back a little bit to distilled water and how you go about drinking it and acquiring it. Uh, if you want to start out, obviously some people can't go right to urine. If, you, if, you've got, if this is resonating and vibrating is true, obviously you'll just jump right into it. And I recommend to anybody if they want to read a book on it, um, there's books available online. You just punch in urine therapy, Amazon, bam, 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 bam. They're, just, they're all right there. But if you never look for it, you'll never find it. The Water of Life by John Armstrong is one of the best ones. Um, there is a website uh, called muno.in, and I'll spell that. It's if you, uh, it's not a it's not a .dot com site. It's out of India. Uh, some guy whose best friend's wife was dying of cancer. He said, "Screw it," and he scanned like almost every one of the urine therapy books that I have. And at this website, they are all there for free to look at. And it's muno.in. That's M-U-N-O-T dot I-N. If you punch that in as a website address, you'll find it. And it's a valuable bank of urine therapy books. I'm going to make sure all those files are also at AquariusTheWaterBearer.com. Um, so, but if you want to start out with distilled water, and it's real easy to do, uh, generally, Walmart has the best tasting distilled water, not because they make it the best, but because they move through the most of it, uh, and it has the least amount of time to sit in a plastic container collecting plastic flavor. Little drug stores like CVS or Eckerd, they tend to have the worst tasting distilled water because they don't move through as much, and it sits there longer. Now, I have friends who are have drank nothing. Some people have concern. They're like, yeah, what about the plastic? That's Yes, it can, you know, distilled water, that's plastic, that's inorganic matter, and distilled water starts dissolving the plastic jug little by little. Uh, but know this. Uh, one, I have friends who have done nothing but drink a gallon a day of distilled water out of store-bought plastic jugs, and they are having complete urine therapy, fountain of youth type effects as though they're drinking urine, although it's completely out of the plastic-contained water. Yes, you will taste plastic a little bit, but remember, it's stuck to those water molecules. It's not going to stay inside you. And so do not worry about that. If that's your source of distilled water, you're not going to be filling yourself up with plastic. That plastic, you're going to taste it. It's going to run over your tongue, but it's going to stay attached to those water molecules, and you're going to excrete it out, Okay. It just means it's picked up a tiny bit of stuff. Walmart generally also has it the cheapest. Uh, I've seen it as low as $0.64, cents, 
it varies at ones, and sometimes they change the price, 78 cents, 99 cents. But, uh, but even if it's at 99 cents a gallon, think about that. What I want you to do in the highest instructions is to drink a gallon a day. Um, and most people think that's a lot, uh, but it's it's actually not. And even in my list of 24 doctors I put together, the 24th doctor, Dr. Hanish, uh, he wrote a book called The Distilled Water Cure. And uh, there's a, the Mazdas Non Association out of Canada currently is publishing that book, and it's spelled M A Z. D-A-Z-N-A-N, Maz Das Nan. And what that means, Maz Das Nan means master of good thought. So it's kind of a nice little thing. So the Maz Das Nan Association is printing Dr. Hanish's book called The Distilled Water Cure. And it's the first four pages of his book that are just off the charts phenomenal. And those are what I quoted uh, as the 24th doctor's quote on the list of doctors. And is he the one that is saying to drink a gallon a day? And um, at at 99 cents a gallon, that's $30 a month, okay? If you make that your first food budget item of every month, that's just, there's no better deal. It's the most awesome deal possible on the planet. And kind of a funny joke about distilled water is it's also usually by far the possible cheapest liquid that you can buy. And that's part of the joke of it, too. They want you to think, you know, that you, that you don't want it, that it's useless, pathetic water. Nobody should drink it. And um, and I also want to interject that um, when I was in Florida at the beginning of the year, that I was drinking distilled water from the jug. And they are doing some kind of an osmosis process for purity, now it says on there. And from what I understand... Um, osmosis process, I, I believe, is a mechanical process, but a gentleman who was involved in uh, with my family, um, he saw that on the jug because he heard us talking about it, and he said the osmosis process that he used when he was working, he's retired, was a chemical process. And mm. that's why I was tasting, it was something besides the VOCs or whatever you talk about, it was a, uh-huh. a nasty taste in the in the distilled liquid. So we went from distilled water that tasted sweet. My my daughter, my sister didn't want to drink it. She said it was too sweet the water. To have wow. it chemically tasting. So don't buy distilled water that has any other processes included on the label. You just want straight well, distilled water, steam distilled. Well, it's going to be steam distilled. <laughs> Yeah, they're usually, I mean, I have seen that where it says steam distillation and ozonation and everything. Uh, but I, I wouldn't necessarily, you, you have to avoid that because I, I know that people are, yes, it may have, that chemical process may put some flavors to it, but it's still an empty vacuum. It, it, it's still, you know, just like it may have picked up a few plastic particles. Uh, really, it's it's the difference between using a brand new vacuum or a vacuum that's totally clogged up, which is what spring water is, well water, lake water, the more particles it's got in it, the less vacuuming power it has to vacuum dirt out of your body. Um, And so, yes, the ozonation process, it may add a few particles to it, but it's still largely a 99% empty vacuum, and it's going to suck stuff out of you. Um, Well, thank you for... Reaffirming that. Yeah. Um, let's see. It's 99 cents at Walmart. Yeah. Um, make that your first budget item of the month. Just go and get 30 gallons at a time and get it done with and so that they're all at your house. And then each day you wake up, just thinking of those water cartridges. Okay. Uh, this is my gallon for the day. This has got to be done by the end of the day. Um, and you just keep it up day after day, and it will slowly start dissolving all the deposits throughout your body. Um, uh, cataracts. Um, I personally know a woman who, after uh, three months, 70 years old, uh, three months she was able to throw her eyeglasses away 
Uh, and it happened, she didn't even, she was so used to wearing them, she didn't even realize she didn't really need them anymore. Uh, she had to go get her license renewed. And she, I think she's 72. She had to go to the DMV to get an eye check, right? And the guy kind of looks up at her, like strangely, the eye test guy, he's like, why are you wearing glasses? He says, you've got 20-20 vision. She said, but I've been required for 45 years to wear eyeglasses. <laughs> and so he was baffled, and he wrote on her license, she's no longer required to wear driving glasses. And uh, she went to her eye doctor because she was, you know, to confirm this, and he absolutely confirmed it. And he's like, what have you done? And she said, well, the only thing I've done different is I started drinking distilled water. And so now that eye doctor is looking into distilled water because of her results. Within the same right. week, she also happened to have an appointment for her little 15, 15 year old dog to take it to a checkup at the vet. And she started giving her dog the distilled water as well when she started drinking it. And the vet kind of comes out of the appointment with a strange look on her face like, what have you done to your dog? Your, your dog has a liver and kidney function of a four-year-old. And okay. it's the still water. Again, it's cleaning out the body. It's removing garbage. And so the body starts to work right. And so now that vet is looking into the still water because she cannot believe what happened to the dog. <laughs> um, so uh, this, this will also clean out, you know, all clogged veins, all arterial sclerosis. Uh, it, it just makes the body completely brand new again. It just okay. Let's talk about detox symptoms. This is port. The still water. They a lot of times they'll label it. Uh, they call it the greatest solvent known to the to man. Okay, and you need to keep that in mind because a lot of times when people first start drinking the still water, they start having detox symptoms, and they can get confused and actually think that it's the distilled water making them sick. It's not. What it is showing you in real time is that it's melting garbage out of you. And so you can have such symptoms uh, when you start drinking a gallon a day. You can have headaches. You can have diarrhea, nausea, flu-like symptoms, sneezing fits, um, runny noses, rashes in strange places, pimples in weird places, terrible breath, armpits that smell worse than you've ever had, feces that start to smell like petroleum, sinuses and runny noses that smells like chlorine, it is melting the garbage out of you, but it's got to come out. And so this stuff right now is, quote, unquote, kind of safely tucked away in the body. It's, you've got deposits all over the place. And the body does not make mistakes. It always makes every decision towards life. And so when you uh, uh, consume garbage, there's only a certain maximum top speed at which the body can eject garbage. And so when you exceed that rate, the body has to keep you alive. And so it deposits it, it because it, can only, it only disposes of it when it can do of it safely. And so when you've got too much coming in all at once, the bloodstream is the last bastion of safety. It will not let the bloodstream get beyond a certain toxic level it has to start storing it in other places, like in between your bones and in little warts on your skin and on the linings of your, your veins. It allows it to stay in places that aren't vital to you at that moment because it's trying to keep you your, you living. And it, it, it's called the law of vital adjustment. It lowers your lifespan in order to keep you alive in the moment. And so when you reverse that trend, um, well, you've got these deposits all over you that are kind of safely, you know, tucked away. But when you start melting them, they have to move out and they have to come out. They they transport out of you. These are nasty things that are all that, you, that you've collected for decades of your life. And they have bad energy to them and they stink and they make you feel bad coming out, coming in transit. You start to actually have, you know, you start to have a higher amount of toxicity flowing through your body because it's being ejected by the blood highway system. And so you start to feel weak. You might start to feel flu-like. And that's because you've got garbage that's in transit now rather than in storage. And, you know, that's a great thing. That's what you want, a better out than in. And this is you have to go through a little bit of pain because of all the decades that you've spent 
consuming dead matter and just literally killing yourself and shortening your lifespan. And so just know that it's not you being sick. It's not the distilled water hurting you. It's that the distilled water is loosening up the garbage and it's coming out. And it's only temporary. Um, If you spend a lot of time swimming in chlorine pools, your sinuses will smell like chlorine. We've spent so much time around petroleum. When you're sitting in traffic, breathing fumes, all the saran wrap you've put on your food and you've microwaved your food in plastic dishes or microwaved it with saran wrap over it and you've got just toxic rain just dripping down on your food, that's all petroleum. Almost all vitamins are synthetic petroleum-based. So your feces will actually start to smell like petroleum and just like, whoa, where did that come from? Uh, but that's garbage, and it's leaving, and it's, it's been sitting in your body, shortening your lifespan. And a lot of people will say to me, yeah, but, you know, I've been eating cooked food my whole life, and, you know, lots of people do. We live to 60 or 70 years old. I go, no, 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 I don't, you don't get it. That's just it. 60 or 70 is a joke. You know, it should be six or 700 at least. And everybody, you know, thinks that the Bible, uh, they, they demand the Bible is the word of God. But yet when it gets to the ages of Moa, uh, Moses, <laughs> Moses and Noah at 600 and 900 <laughs> years old, you're like, well, look, it's word of God, but it, it says Noah was 900 years old. So how come I can't be 900 years old? Oh, well, shut up. You know, I don't want to answer that. Uh, they used to keep track of time differently back then. You know, I'm like, what, do they have 10 sunrises and sunsets in one day? No, it's that the place used to be more pure and that these guys used to know the secrets of how to take care of the three-dimensional bodysuit. And if you do it right, Western science admits it has no known reason for the body to die besides the simple fact of toxic overload. And that is the beauty of distilled water, uh, and it's why we don't know about it, because distilled water removes toxic overload. All Western and Eastern medicine is purposely only treating symptoms. Because if you only treat the symptoms and you don't remove the cause, you are guaranteed repeat business. And the beauty of distilled water is it doesn't care what disease you have. It doesn't necessarily cure all diseases. It removes the cause of all diseases, including all mental problems, you know, which are all just caused by junk in the system. It's hard to think straight. It's hard not to be depressed when all your nerve endings are coated with garbage. But Dr. Alexander Graham Bell is one of the doctors on my list of doctors. He was he had sciatica or scatia or whatever you call it, the nerve endings covered with garbage. And he just happened to be experimenting with distilled water at the time to using it in his mechanical lab processes and he knew that it removed and cleaned his machines. So he said, well well wait a second, I'm a machine. Why wouldn't that work inside me? So he started drinking distilled water when he was like in his 60s or 70s and ended up living until late into his 90s and completely erased his health problems. And so the guy whose object we're talking on on the phone, he saved his life on distilled water. And that's another thing about distilled water is in the stores, a lot of times it'll say on the bottles for small appliances. And people, most people will only buy distilled water to clean their machines, to keep because if you run spring water or well water through your iron or your machines like uh, little bubbling fountains or humidifiers, hmm, they quickly become full of garbage and they have scale and deposits all over them. So you're only supposed to use distilled water to keep machines clean. Well, you're a machine, right? That's the right. same idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just silliness. That's brilliant, um, brilliant. Now, it's not silly. Um, you could, well, we have a, a 31 minutes, but um, maybe you could talk about the um, uh, Chinese uh, government document. You know, just throw uh, which, that in which there. Which one? The, the ones that talk about the people that lived to be three, 400 years in China. Oh, Before yeah. I become, mean, there's yeah. just... If you start actually looking into the longevity of reports, there's people that are living for hundreds and thousands of years, uh, even yogis up in the mountains, 1,500 years. And the main way they're doing it is through urine therapy. Um, 
let's talk about uh talk about okay a pineal gland more let's that's this is very important this is let's talk about what well this, we haven't you, gotten just, into the astral projection yet so you want to talk about that yeah, process right, of, right. of the pineal okay. right that's right I want to tell you I want to give you three things the still water knowledge of pure water knowledge of the pineal gland and that you are a ball of light okay uh, and distilled water frees up that ball of light that you are. Uh, when I was in Ecuador, <clears throat> I met a shaman who told me that while I go to sleep every night, I sleep for eight hours, he goes out onto the astral plane and does battle with demons, freeing up human souls who are trapped in tar balls strung upon necklaces on the necks of demons. Now, at the time, I'd never heard of astral projection, and I had no idea whether or not this guy was totally off his rocker and whether or not to believe him. But I at least learned enough by then through research to know that I was stupid and want to hear something that I don't have any reference to, to at least hold it as a possibility. Now I, I completely believe him because I've collected 20 books on astral projection and I understand the functioning aspects of the pineal gland and what the third eye is all about. Um, and the third eye is so important, that's why they want to shut it down with fluoride and chlorine. They do not want you accessing these powers. And this is the pyramid with the eye on the back of the dollar bill. There's, a, again, a pictogram for the third eye. Now, David Wilcock, in his gorgeous video, An Explanation of the Pineal Gland, reveals that the secret and the beauty of the pineal gland, the secret about it, is that it's full of water. And this is literally a third, it's an eyeball. And it has rods and cones in it. And right now, your your two eyeballs in the front of your head have rods and cones which are oriented outwards. And as you are awake during the day, you are the center and the whole universe is out there. When you shut your two eyes and you have a functioning third eye and you go to sleep at night or you lay down and meditate and let the body fall asleep, and let the third eye turn on, it's an inside-out eyeball. Yes, it's got rods and cones, but they're not oriented outwards. The sphere of the third eye is lined on the inside with rods and cones, spherical 360. But they're oriented towards the center of the third eye. And you flip the universe inside out. And as above, so below, as without, so within, the whole universe is inside you when you reverse your position. Instead of you being the center looking outwards, when you switch to the two eyes, as in Matthew 6.22 if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. When you switch to the third eye, your rods and cones are all on the, the outer part of the sphere. So all of a sudden, your point of view, rather than when you're awake, your point of view is singular looking outwards. When you open up the third eye, your point of view is from completely on the exterior looking inwards and you flip the universe inside out, this is the symbolism of the cube within a cube. Uh, and when people finally unfreeze the pineal gland, they have what's known as a crown chakra burst or a, the kundalini rising. Those are one and the same. And along with the pressure in the head, the most common thing that's reported with it is white light fills their interior, fills in their inner vision. Their just whole head is filled with white light and I want to prove to you that you are a ball of light you are a star just like that thing in the sky called the sun you are one of those and on the infinite scale of size it doesn't matter you are an infinitesimally small ball of light compared to your perspective now but somewhere on the scale the ball of light that you are is just as big as the sun is to you are now and you the pineal gland is a crystal throne for the ball of light that you are. And when you finally open up your pineal gland and you have the crown chakra burst and you see white light flooding your head, 
what you are looking at, since you are, you are, you are looking at you, you, that is you, you are a star, that's the ball of light that you are, that white light that you're looking at is you. And they call it your soul. And that soul is the word for the sun in Latin and in Spanish. And the type of power that we get from the sun is solar. And they like to hide things in words. And it's not the spelling of the word that matters, it's the sound. In the beginning was the word, and the word was sound. And it's called your soul because they're describing that you are a ball of light. Just like the sun is a ball of light. It's a star. You are a star. And they don't want us looking at ourselves. They don't want us realizing that we are stars. That's why we have Hollywood stars. In the ancient times, the Druids would perform ceremonies and control the people by, by imagery. They would they have these rituals and create imagery, and they would always perform their rituals with a stick. Their wand was a stick from the holly tree, a piece of holly wood. And they want you, now Hollywood creates imagery with stars. They're controlling they want to control what we think of what is and what the reality is. And you pay attention to our stars. Don't look internal. Don't look at your own star. Look at our stars. Now you know that you are a star. You are a ball of light. Your soul is a ball of light. And there's three body groups of information and testimonials that you can look at to help prove this. There's lucid dreamers, astral projectors, and near-death experience. Lucid dreamers are people who, during the middle of the night, while they're dreaming, they become conscious that it's a dream. They, so to speak, wake up in the dream, but they don't physically wake up and sit out of bed. They just become conscious during the dream that it's a dream. And as soon as they do that, they go, well, this is the dream world. I can do anything I want. And then instead of being, uh, most people's dreams are like, kind of like a victim to it, like it's this movie that you're watching. You don't really have much control. And that's done on purpose, too. We aren't educated about dreams. The only thing you ever hear during your whole life about dreams is, oh, well, we just don't really know what they are. And that's on purpose. Did I miss the class on dreams in high school? No. <laughs> they don't want to talk about it because it's a whole nother, uh, it's a whole nother world. Uh, and the lucid dreamers, as soon as they start realizing that it's the dream world, they can do anything they want. They can fly. They can go see dead grandma. They can talk to Einstein if they want. They can, they can go see the backside of the moon. They can do anything they want. So you've got those people. You know all those testimonials. Now look at astral projectors. Astral projectors are just the same as lucid dreamers, except that uh, astral projectors consciously either while they're falling asleep at night or during the middle of the day, they lay down and they let the body fall asleep, except that, whereas normally people, when they try to fall asleep, they, try to, they, try to, they let go of their consciousness, right? Don't let go of your consciousness. Close your eyes and look into the black. And even right now, you can close your eyes and you can kind of see twinkly, sparkly lights. Well, if you're in a dark room, and even put a blindfold on if you want to, so you don't think, oh, maybe it's just some street light coming in messing with my eyes. After about 15 or 20 minutes, especially in the beginning, uh, when you get better at it and when your pineal gland is fully opened up, you can do it immediately. But what the astral projectors report, and I have 20 books on this, and I've read you know, close to 1,000 testimonials on that now as well, what opens up in that black space is, space, uh, is a, a white circle of spinning light. It's like a tube of, of vortex and a few stars that you, you keep looking. And this is literally what you'll be seeing inside your head. And what you're actually you're viewing, it's, it's literally your third eye. This is what your third eye is seeing, is this tunnel of white light opens up. And a few stars start to shoot through it. And then more and more stars. And then it feels like you're actually going through this vortex, this tunnel. And then after a little while, you come to the end of the tunnel, and you can look around 360, and there's stars everywhere. And at that point, you're out on the astral plane, the dreamland. At that point, you're at the exact same place the lucid dreamers are. And from there, 
You can do anything you want. You can go see dead grandma. You can talk to Einstein. You can go see the backside of the moon if you want. Okay? Now, now let's move to the third set of testimonials is near-death experience. These people, the common testimonial thread is two things. One, they can see, they have a, when they come back to life on the operating table, in their head, they have a view, a memory of above the operating table. Now, it's one thing for them to be able to tell the doctors and nurses what they were talking about while they were flatlining. So they say, okay, well, your ears were still on. I guess you were just recording it with your, with your ear. But how is it possible that they have an above the operating room view in their head. Uh, uh, they can see themselves from above. The only way that's possible is that the ball of light that was them was leaving the body, and that's your point of view, and they were leaving, and they could see from above. And that's their astral body leaving. And when they look in the other direction, where they're headed, what do they see? A white tunnel of light. The same thing that the astral projectors report going through. Now, what that is, is that is the biblical silver cord. That vortex, that tunnel, is actually the silver cord, and it's the viewpoint from inside the silver cord. People that can see auras and can see the, astro, the uh, silver cord, it's a very, very thin, wispy line. And lo and behold, it's anchored at the third eye, the pineal gland. And that is the tube that you use, that is the vortex, the stargate, in and out of the body. And the ball of light that you are is very, very, a very small ball of light, and that you travel through that uh, to leave the body. Now, there's another thing that helps to uh, prove this. In Western medicine, in the development of the fetus, it says on the 49th day is the day that the pineal gland forms as the fetus is developing. Well, that just very nicely coincides with, in Eastern medicine, in Buddhism, the soul does not incarnate into the fetus until the 49th day. And you know how I'm trying to prove to you that you're a ball of light, that you're a star, and the pineal gland is a stargate? Well, we have Western medicine saying that the pineal gland, the stargate, forms on the 49th day. And in Eastern medicine, your soul does not incarnate until the 49th day. So the same day that the stargate forms in the fetus is the exact same day that the star shows up. You, the you that is you. This is just one of many temporary experiences. You are an immortal ball of light having many experiences and uh, have you ever heard the statement that water is the lubricant between dimensions? Mm-hmm. Well, this will ring true yeah. in many, many different ways, and uh, here again, even in the fetus, you cannot make the dimensional shift until you're floating in water. The baby is floating in urine, and you cannot make that shift until you're floating in water. The water is the lubricant between dimensions. And uh, in the movie Constantine with Keanu Reeves, there's a scene where a woman wants to talk to her dead sister. And he says, okay, you've got to get in the bathtub. She's all right. So she gets in the bathtub. She says, okay, I'm ready now. He goes, no, no, you've got to get all the way under the water. She's like, why? And he says something akin to, you can't communicate with the other dimensions unless you're fully submerged in the water. Water is a lubricant between dimensions. Okay? Now, on that white tunnel of light, again, we got on the Sci-Fi Channel the Stargate series, and here again, just like Andrew Bazzaggio, we got to have a trillion-dollar machine in order to do dimensional travel. And what do they? Ha- what is the Stargate machine on that? It's a big, giant circle uh, of spinning white light, and the surface of it is covered with water. It's, you have to stick your hand through. You have to. Water is what allows you to go through other dimensions, to access other dimensions. It's a lubricant. And even we can say that the drinking of the distilled water opens up the pineal gland and allows you to access other dimensions. Water is the lubricant between dimensions. Um, So 
Now, now also astral projectors report that when you are out on the astral plane, you don't have a body. You're, you're a ball of light. You can manifest it if you want to with your own intentional thoughts, but they notice for the most part that as they travel around and they're zooming around and they fly around, they really they actually don't even have a body um, and that they are a ball of light. That's a common report is that they are, in, are a ball of light. And I have a friend who was just dreaming the other day and an ascended master was giving her instructions of, of how to... Uh, start astral traveling in the dream and she started following his instructions and she popped into an orb of white light. <laughs> she changed. Uh, Carlos Castaneda also, the three things that he tells people to work on and I very much suggest everybody else do this too. Uh, he says you need to work on dreaming, which is astral projection, intent and stalking. And what he means by stalking is S-T-A-L-K-I-N-G. Stalking, he wants you to stalk the real you. He wants you to, and he means by it is to drop habits. Say you start fasting or, uh, you know, if you smoke and drink all the time, drop that habit. Peel away layers of habit in the 3D world. And so you can, you are stalking or searching for the essence, for the real you. Um, so he wants you to work on dreaming, intent, and stalking. And the intent is, well, this is very important, in astral projection, it's the amount of determination you put behind your thoughts. Uh, and Ann Moss uh, has a beautiful uh, example of that. Ann Moss is somebody you can look up. She's been an astral projector for 30 years. She's been doing it since she was a little kid. And the way she says, the way intent comes in, and one time she was she wanted to go see the moon. She wanted to see what this all this uh stuff was about whether or not there's bases on the moon or you know what what really is the moon. And so she was she meditated and she left her body. Uh she went through the vortex and she got to the astral plane and she said, "Okay, I want to go see the moon." And when you'll notice uh, when you're on the astral plane, uh your commands are followed. What you say, what you desire, your intents are, are listened to. Every every wish is, is the astral plane's command. But uh, she was moving towards the moon like at a walking pace. And a lot of times people feel that in their dreams, like when they're in a scary situation, they're trying to run, but it feels like their feet are made out of glue or something. They can, can't run very fast. Mm-hmm. So she was like, man, this is going to take forever. Because like, she could see the moon, but she was like getting there at a, at a, at a running pace at the most. She was like, I'm, you know, this is going to take weeks at this pace. I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get there in eight hours even. And so she finally goes, she goes, take me to the moon now. And she put that intent behind it, and bam, instantly she was at the moon. So that's what we mean by intent. That's what Castaneda means by intent. Start, that's your, I think it's your third chakra, your will. Start summoning that power and start having determination in your voice. And... um it looks like, you know, your intent works here as well, but we're in the third density, and things happen slower here because it's very dense. I think the word dimension, third dimension, is very misleading, and third density or fourth density, fifth density, is much more uh, accurate in helping you to understand what that means. Um, things don't happen slower here because things are very dense. This is a very a dense place, and uh, William Bowman, who wrote a great astral projection book called Adventures Beyond the Body, uh, he said the same thing. That's one way to judge what dimension you are in or how far away from the third density you are is by the speed at which things happen to your command. If they happen, you know, slowly or, or kind of, you know, you're maybe in the fourth or fifth density, but if they start to happen instantly, you know, you're up in the 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th densities. You know, I don't know how many they are. But that's just kind of a, a gauge. The, the higher vibrating you are, the faster things happen and the faster the all listens to your command. Wonderful. We have 10 minutes um, left. Okay. On the uh, live section, I have another hour in recorded time. So um, 
just do what you want to do. I mean, this is so okay. unbelievably I'll throw in that important. The, the little, <laughs> I'll throw in that little thing that uh, I started talking about, about the sound uh, A-L or E-L, L or all, and how uh, that means light. Uh, the words life and light, star, sun, and God are are interchangeable in when you're talking about energies. Um, and even the word life and light, the word light has the G-H in it, which is silent. But normally when you see G-H in a word, like enough, it's an F sound. So light is actually life. Life and light, we are light. We are life. Life, light, star, sun. You are a ball of light. You are a ball of sun. You are a star. You are a ball of life. These are all the same things. And we see objects in our world that end with A-L. And Israel, the E-L, it's the same thing. That's, those are all uh, sun cults. They're referring to cults that worship the sun, a ball of light. And so we have these objects in our world. The most valuable, some of the most valuable objects is the sun, right? It's very valuable. And diamonds and gold. Well, diamonds and gold are crystals and metals. They both end with A-L. And the pineal ends with A-L. And a cathedral. A cathedral is a catheter of light. It draws down energies from the sun, from the all. Even the thing we call the whole universe is called the all. It's all the light. And a uh, crystal, Christ, means the anointed one. So a crystal is a massive compaction of anointed light. A metal, the met means about or with. Metal and gold is, everybody talks about it being the ultimate condensation of high, high light particles. And so metal is, is condensed light. Crystals are condensed light. Uh, they say in this universe that all that there is is light and sound. And all matter is condensed to light, and the sound at which it, the sound that it has, is is what determines the shape of it. Uh, that is the vibrational pattern, and your DNA is what's vibrating your sound. In ancient Atlantis, people could recognize each other coming before they even saw each other by the sound that they had. When they had their, when everybody gets their senses fully turned back on. You have infinitely perceptible, fine-tuned senses, and we all have a sound, and we are matter, the matter, the condensed light that is our body. Everybody has their own particular shape because they have their own particular sound, and it doesn't matter how decrepit and deformed you get, your DNA knows your sound, and so when you drink distilled water and free up all the garbage that's stopping your DNA from performing its duty, you will revert back to your original shape because your DNA is going to keep producing your original sound, which is going to vibrate and create your body to form in its original shape. Uh, one of the things that most helps a lot of people, um, especially Western-raised people, understand this concept is cymatics. You look it up on the internet, it's spelled C Y M A T I C S. They take sand or salt and pour it on a metal plate that has a speaker underneath it. And when you turn on the speaker to a particular frequency, bam, the sand or salt moves and creates a sacred geometric form. And when you change the pitch or the frequency, bam, it switches to another sacred geometric form. And the higher the frequency, the more complex the sacred geometric form that the sand or salt forms to. And if you lower it back down to a particular frequency, it goes right back to that exact same shape. Now, that's all that you are. Remember, there's an infinite scale of shapes and sounds and sizes. You, your body shape is a frequency somewhere up on that infinite scale, and the particular sound that you are is your shape. <coughs> Uh, is that a, is that a train? Yeah, 
I tried to go inside so I could hear the water. I'm in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. We have a, a lot of trains here. This is this is one of the towns that is currently planned for being one of the, the smart growth zones where they want people shoved into compact, compact housing near railroad tracks. And that's what we've got here. <laughs> like like yeah. Auschwitz or something. Yes, exactly. Mm. But we're going to... Ch- we're going to change all that. Uh, that's all. Those are all systems. They're all old and crumbling. And uh, when we all assume our power, which we're doing in real time here, uh, we have our powers. And so hopefully Devin will have heard all this, and uh, he will know that he has powers now. And then uh, I believe, as I know, that they're actually both already underway, assuming these processes. And uh, let's change this place. Let's make it into the new place that we have. Let's just assume our powers and rise up and create the new paradigm. You can feel it in your heart. Even if you haven't ever seen the paradise, you know what it feels like in your heart. You know that the way this place is, this cruel, evil money system, and uh, you know people are just trapped with the five senses. And so it makes sense that people are greedy. They can't. They don't, have, they don't sense any other senses, so the only thing they can do is acquire money to, to please their taste buds with steaks and lobster or, you know, get a lazy boy share to make their body feel comfortable. But they just don't realize they have much, much higher senses that they can use that gives pleasure way beyond eating or sitting in a lazy boy chair. Uh, feel it with your heart. Start, let us all start forming and feeling the new place in the way that it should be. How about beautiful. that? That's absolutely beautiful. We have uh, three minutes left, so what would you what like we to do? do? I don't know. We could tell each other how wonderful we are. I like that. <laughs> I am so honored. I, you have no idea. This, this information, I don't think, on a cosmic level, I don't, I don't even know if I realize just how enormous this is what you have just given to us. I mean, William Henry's doing conferences now, charging people hundreds of dollars to come and hear not even half of what you just gave in two hours freely. Yeah. You know, you gave the whole ball of wax. Unbelievable. The whole ball of light. On, on a it whole ball free. of light. It should be free. <laughs> and it is free. Yeah. And, it, and it will continue to be free. Yeah, oh, I haven't heard anybody putting these these complete things together. There are so few people that know about distilled water, and that's why it is so highly guarded of a secret. Because, you know, aside from emergency surgical operations that put doctors and hospitals out of business in a heartbeat, um, but more than that, Absolutely. more than freeing up the physical body, it frees up the mind. It free it allows you to access spirit. It allows you to finally see and know that you truly are a spiritual being having a a human experience. A human, right? As in light, the hue, the light. And what is a a unit of light? It's a lumen. So we are humans working on fully becoming lumens. We are each a unit of light. We are each a ball of light, the human lumen. And uh, the sound of the sun. Oh, this is a good one. Most Buddhists, their basic chant is Om. And we measure resistance of power in the electrical world by Ohms. And now they've recorded the sounds of the planets. And Mm -hmm. Earth sounds like all the birds singing all at once. It's a crazy, beautiful, crazy sound. I heard it. And they think that what the birds are doing, isn't that beautiful? They think what the birds are doing is actually since they have their senses turned on, they listen to the earth and the birds are actually mimicking the sound of the earth. But here's the beautiful thing, coming back to ohms, you know, I'm trying to tell you that you're a ball of light and the Buddhist's most basic chant is to go ohm. Well, when they finally got an audio recording of the sun, that big ball of light, the sound of the sun is ohm. I heard it. I well, heard it the other day. It's Wonderful. so... Yeah, it makes so much sense. It's amazing. It's amazing. I think and that's what we are all, and they say that's what every planet is on its path towards, is becoming a star, a giant ball of light. 
And so we are all the individual brain cells of this planet. We have fully become our human lumens and make this whole big planet a big giant lumen. And then it's on its way to becoming a gorgeous, bright, shining ball of light in itself. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Chrissy, too. Thank you for all the time you spend interviewing so many wonderful people like Laura Magdalene oh. Eisenhower and just on and on. You just keep at it. and It's wonderful. Well, thank you, Andrew. We're no longer on the air, but we're still recording. But um, it, it's amazing the work that you've put in and, and just in this past year, the um, in the last six months, I guess, that information you've gotten on the pineal and astral projection and our true nature, that we are a ball of light. I mean, for you yeah, to share that the, with us. Did the OM thing uh, make it into the recording? Uh, I believe, yeah. Um, awesome. It's all that the was... recording. It's just you were you were live on the air. That was the only difference. It's all being right. recorded. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that but was, I think uh, that was the last thing you Thank you said. for prompting me along the way. Once again, you're an excellent interviewer, and uh, you beautifully <laughs> held me in line there whenever I got off track or something. I really appreciate it. Oh. I really feel great about this interview. I think we got almost all the highest important things in there. Very, very nicely compacted two hours. Yes, and I think uh, you're ready to go on the uh, circuit tour. So um, if you don't mind, I'm going to forward this uh, recording to back to Scott. And okay. uh, I'm going to go with Scott Meredith first because I think that uh, they're resonating a little bit on a higher frequency than maybe William and Jay. Widener, oh. so um, uh -huh. I think uh, I think that whatever Ka uh, Carnicom uh, is doing or isn't doing, you know, we all have our own make our own karma. We all work in our own dharma. Yeah. So whatever we're creating, but uh, I'm going to forward this uh, to Conscious Media Network, and I'm going to keep it on my Facebook page. And I'm going to put it on my blog, and I'm going to make it the featured video when I figure out how to put it on video and put it on YouTube and the television station that I reset up again last night. So, um, oh, my God, it would be, be so awesome. It would be so – I wish this could be one of those. If this audio could go with corresponding video images, oh, my God. You know what well, I mean? Well, if you have pictures, yeah, if you have pictures you want to send – Cause that's how. Uh, I mean, um, I'm just not. I'm not good at that. We need. We need somebody that's good at that. And, uh, well, no, you can just uh, give me an idea of pictures. I mean, you can just send that information to me. Just say, hey, look over here. There's a picture. Look over there. You know. And yeah. We'll, uh, oh, okay. Get you, that. You, you can do that. So, yeah, and I'm well, sorry. Saying, I think uh, I'm pretty much. I'm pretty much talking in pictures, anyways. You know, I'm using a lot of words that are very easy oh. to uh, visualize in your head. And so we just you need are corresponding. so articulate. It's beautiful. You're so articulate. I mean, I don't think you give yourself enough credit what what you're saying. And oh, you didn't tell the the listeners, not that anybody's listening right now, but that <laughs> when you related about the shaman in Ecuador, that he told you about your past lives. Oh right, right. Yeah, that's true. Why this is coming to you? Because in your past lives you were a shaman many times. So this is uh, you said the medicine, a medicine man. I don't know if there's a difference between medicine men and shamans, but he said that he used the term medicine is. man. Okay. I don't think there is any difference. The shaman is a shaman, and it and it's all included. You're a you wizard. You can run and tell that. <laughs> run and tell that. <laughs> I love this that. This is so amazing. Know. I mean, it's like sitting on a gold mine. I mean, who needs money when you have this? Exactly. This is like so who phenomenal. Needs gold? That's who right. Gold, gold is the most. gold. That's right. Liquid gold, gold. baby. <laughs> That's what we key out. It's liquid gold. <laughs> and we turn into liquid gold in our auras. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. So, um,. Is that, Alrighty. If anybody is interested in, oh, let me just add this, if anybody's interested in understanding the process of how to utilize 
urine therapy. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? And we can have that on the end of this? Or do you want to refer them to the original audio and videos that I have already set up? Um, I guess I should probably go now. Um, and I think uh, the books themselves, you know, the basic thing is to drink it and to loop it. And uh, the Egyptian papyrus says to, the first line of the Egyptian papyrus is, the water of life is given to you. Drink it and bathe with it every day. It doesn't get much simpler than that. You know, just once a day, just like the supermodel, put on a coat of on, on your body and let it air dry in. Uh, and if you've got to go out in public and it smells, just do a water rinse. Uh, but they usually, they usually do it at night and just let it, you know, soak in overnight. Yeah. But uh, the books themselves, and now that, that they're available online, uh, it's pretty simple. And, and I love the fact that the creator made it so simple. <laughs> well, with that, I'll just say thank you so much. Namaste. Um, have a wonderful Namaste. life, Andrew. And we will continue this conversation. Thank you for helping to make my life wonderful, and thank you for giving uh, an Aquarius uh, an outlet to broadcast this information. Uh, we could all use this water knowledge now. It's it's what we need to get us to the next step. It's not the overall answer. It's just part of the path. And we Absolutely. all have it. Give my love to I love you very much. Thank Jesse you so much, and girl. To Susie and just have a wonderful life and we'll continue this. It's awesome and um have yeah. a great day. And uh, get get Jesse uh, you know what you should do? Get Jesse to do a urine therapy uh instructional interview. She's even a, a much better speaker than I am. She's a fantastic Okay, that'll be follow up. Absolutely. Um, okay, cool. well that'll be my next goal. Thank you. Thank you for your okay, time. Chris. Thank you for Thank your you. knowledge. Take care. Thank the universe. Bye. Light bodies. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening. This has been Bob Schiff Pearls. I'm Christy McMahon. We're leaving you live from Columbia, North South Carolina, and Bristol, Pennsylvania. And the sun is shining now because we're all illuminated. <laughs> Peace.